Karen for this is Miss Karen is um, in, in in the way of realtors, I would say relatively new to being a realtor. She's what less than a couple of years? Five, five years. So five years, because some of these real estate people have been in real estate for for 20 and 30 years. And the reason why I wanted her perspective is because as being a newer real estate agent, she can tell y'all, because I'm sure when she went in, it's still fresh in her mind, some of the preconceived notions she had. And I think she'll give us a little bit of a, a more, um, not realtor if you will, perspective of what they can do for you and what they can't do for you um, and what to kind of just look out for. So she's just going to share some of her experiences uh, with us. Um, and then also before we close, David wants to talk to us a little bit. Uh, he'll come up here and just a little. He has something he'd like to talk to us about relative to home inspections because home inspections are very important. And as you all know, David is a, is a, a master plumber. So maybe I don't know if he has something in there he's going to talk to us about. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to be brief, and I have notes because I could talk pretty much for hours um, with stories. We tell a lot of stories in real estate because um, that's that way you can relate, you know, and put yourself in that position, and um, it's a selling point. And I'm a salesperson. <laughs> but uh, let me start over. As an agent, I have your best interest at heart. Uh, that's my responsibility. Uh, that's I can lose my license if I'm not um, ethical with you. Um, so here I'm going to start with uh, pastors. Is we're talking about renting versus buying, uh, which the pros and cons. Um, so most, how many rents we have? Okay, so um, I'm also a first-time home buyer, so I can walk you through the process. Um, I'll talk about renting first. The pros to renting. Um, the mobility freedom to move around for 12 months. As a renter, uh, let me ask Jennifer, how long have you been in your position, in your, in your apartment? Um, a year and a half. A year and a half. Uh, how long you intend to stay? Just in your mind. Um, probably not another year. Okay. So that's, that's one of the pros to renting. It gives you the time to get ready to buy. Um, yes, you lose money because you're just giving that money away pretty much every month versus um, owning, owning your own home. Um, you start building equity. Um, the landlord pays for maintenance. That's one of the pros for renting. Yeah. So any issues, you just call, hey, the AC's not working, the sink is leaking, whatever, and they'll take care of it. Whereas with purchasing a home, you ha you're responsible. You have to find a plumber and everything else for that. Um, no fluctuation in monthly housing expenses. That, hmm, that one doesn't make much sense in that position. Allow your test to test drive your different living spaces. So you've been there a year and a half. Um, you get an idea of the, a the area, whether you like that, so you can look for a home in that particular area, or um, just like, no, nah, I don't like it over here. Um, so, so it gives you that flexibility. The cons, you don't build equity. You just give that money away every month, as I mentioned. Um, limited ability to customize your living space. You can't take a wall down. Um, if you want to change the, the, the paint color, you need to get permission from the landlord. And a lot of them, they tell you that um, you need to put it back to the original color before you leave. So um, another con, the rent can increase over time. Some of them every year, they increase on you. Um, the landlord can decide to st that he wants to sell the home if you're in a, in a, a house or even the apartment building they want to sell, and then you have to find um, you have to make you know necessary arrangements to move. Now the pros and cons to home buying. There's not too many cons, but. <laughs> uh, the pros I, I think there are what you said about the unexpected right the unexpected fluctuation in cost right? right if your AC goes out or your 
roof needs repair. I mean, Absolutely. I mean, we, we, we're sitting up here talking a lot about how great it is to be a home buyer, but you, you, you need to, you know, you need to Those make are sure. Things, yes, you have to consider um, and keep that, that um, rainy day fund for the just in case. Yeah, the emer you definitely, if you're a homeowner, you definitely need an emergency fund. Yes. So some of the, pr the pros, you can build equity over time. Um, and what, uh, as an agent, what I will help you do is um, based on the location. Because if, if it's a, 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 um, an area where they're building, so that lets you know that in a few years, because if they're putting a mall, if they're putting any, uh, yeah, any type of improvements in the community, that helps your equity go up. Um, the home value can appreciate. Also, tax benefits, um, where you can, your uh, interest, you can write that off. And other, you know, get with your tax person, they let you know the different um, things that you can write off uh, um, of your yearly taxes. The freedom to customize your home. Um, again, like I mentioned, you can take a wall down if you want to. Um, you can add on to the property, whereas if you were renting, you would have to get permission to do that. It also gives you a stability and a sense of accomplishment uh, and help build generational wealth. Some of the cons um, to home buying, the closing can be a hindrance, uh, like Ms. Alta was t talking about, um, and Jay as well. Um, you, you have to have the closing costs, the down payment, and you have to also have monies to pay up front for the inspections that you will need. There are four different types of inspections that you would need for um, when purchasing a home. It's the, the general inspection, like she said, the visual things that they can see. Uh, also the roof, the air condition, the electric, electrical um, and the air conditioning unit. Those are things that um, you get as part of the inspection. So you also you need to have monies for those things. Uh, the responsibility for repairs and maintenance that I mentioned previously, you have to have monies for that put aside. Less flexibility to, re to re relocate. So you get into the home and uh, you, you didn't do your homework and now you don't like it. You don't like the home, you don't like the area. Um, <laughs> Uh, you can't just, right, yeah, you can't just pick up and it's like, okay, I, I got to get out of here. Um, <laughs> it takes time, and you may not be able, if you're in there for a year or two years, you may not be able to get your monies back that you put into it based on the neighborhood again. So you, all those things you have to think about, uh, the home value may decrease. Like we had back in, um, in 2008, nine when we real estate was in trouble and um, my townhouse I mean the, the price it flipped I owed more than I owned <laughs> you know because it, it, the property values dropped so much um, so that is an, an issue as well but in this market I don't think there's anything you have to worry about um, I have a question, yes um, being in real estate for five years now um, and and what you've seen in real estate. If you were not a real estate agent and you were on the outside looking in, what would be one or two things that you would, me not knowing anything about real estate, you would tell me, knowing what you know today, about selecting a real estate agent to help you, to work with? Glad you asked. I have that written down. Good. <laughs> Uh, well, you want someone, first of all, that you gel with. You want to make sure that, first of all, the person, they have your best interest at heart. Because some, some agents, just like any uh, other, um, um, you know, um, profession, profession, you have good people, you have bad people. You have good ones, you have ones that they just want to make that dollar, just want to make that sale. So you're a number. Um, so you want to make sure you're able to develop a relationship with that person. Um, when you talk to them, they listen. Uh, they pay attention to what you're saying um, and not just trying to push you off into, you know, any home. Um, and 
there may be issues with the home or um, things that you can't see. So you want to make sure that you're able to um, develop that relationship with, with that agent. Um, let me see, did I finish on pros and cons? Yes. So how to find a real estate agent? You uh, talk to a lender before you hire a real estate agent. That's one way. Um, because the lenders, they work with closely with agents, you know, that they feel comfortable with. Uh, and they've been, been working with them for a few years. So um, that's a good way, a reference. Uh, research potential candidates. Uh, you can ask your, ask your friends, family for references. Um, for a recommendation interview at least three agents that way you're able to, to find out their point of view uh, if they're able to um, help you realistically all of my clients I can stand here and say I can go back to them and have a conversation I can refer you to them because I develop a relationship with every single one of them um, I, it's the relationship to me is more is better than uh, just you know selling them a house because an, an, um, from a business standpoint you get referrals that way so that's a good way to do it uh, and go with your gut well that's what it says here but I say pray about it yeah <laughs> pray about it because again you know you get a vibe from people you can tell you know I want to make sure that, you, you know, you have some kind of um, spiritual, uh, what's the word? Connection. Connection. Uh, yes. You have, you're ethical. Um, so pray about it. Some people, you get around them and just the energy is just, yeah, run. <laughs> and also, because... Um, Part of the process, um, let's, oh, Miss Jennifer, let's say, um, with you, um, you hire me as your agent. Well, I shouldn't say hire me, but you want to work with me, you want me to help you find a home. Uh, what I will do is have you sign an exclusive broker buyer's agreement. So that way you're committed to me and I'm committed to you for a certain amount of time. So you want to review that document and make sure that you, they don't have you on there for a year and a half. Um, so uh, um, for after three months or three to six months, if for whatever reason it's not working out, you know, they're showing you homes that you're not, they're not listening to what you're saying, you're able to say, okay, um, we can move on. Uh, now, one thing I wanted to mention too, is, as Ms. Alta was talking about the preparation for the loan, you will need a pre-qualification letter. That, that's what the, the start of your relationship with the lender, is getting that letter. Because when we start working together and uh, you see a home that you like, you want to, you're interested and you want to put an offer, we need that letter to go along with the contract. So that's what you want to have. There's a pre-qualification letter or proof of funds. The proof of funds is for cash. The pre-qualification letter is for financing. So those things you want to make sure th that you have. It's really good that she said for real estate salespeople is she said the main thing when it comes to selling. And you could tell she'd be a great person to work with. She listens. Salespeople think selling is talking. Selling is pitching. Selling is, you know, no, selling is listening to what does your buyer want. She said the magic word. So when you're interviewing those agents, as you're interviewing them, look, pay attention to how they listen to you. I told a company the other day, if you are this non-responsive in the sales process, how are you going to be once I become a customer? If you're not listening to me and you're not responding to me, in the sales process, when you're getting paid a commission, it's like car salesmen, right? They, they, they don't know. Just, no, this is what I want. Put me, put me where I need to be.